Hi, I'm Damon Smith, Extension Field Crops Pathologist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I'm joined today by Dr. Sean Conley and Dr. Brian Luck. One of the things that is, is really going on in the industry right now and, and pretty innovative is the use of drones and drone technology on the farm. And we're out here testing uh, this drone, uh, doing some interesting spray work, and I'm going to turn things over to Dr. Conley and Dr. Luck to tell us more about how we're using technology like this, not only to be innovative, but also st sustainable. Thanks, Damon. I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit about the drone itself and that, that this was sponsored and funded by the Wisconsin Soybean Marketing Board and the Wisconsin Corn Growers Association. What we really want to do with this is look at being able to find niches where these drones can work. And I think one area out here we're looking at is using it to spray for white mold. Uh, but another area is be able to intercede cover crops into standing soybean and corn. And we'll be looking into that a little bit more. But to get more specifics on the drone itself, I think I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Luck. Yep, so a couple things to consider. This is a uh, different animal than your normal remote sensing drone. It's heavier, there's more licensure that you need and more, also more permits from the FAA. So make sure if you're using something like this or considering it, you understand all the requirements that are, are needed there to be legal. Uh, a couple other things is we wanna make sure this can cover sort of the 30 to 40 acres an hour uh, that we want, but we wanna make sure we're spraying on label as well uh, to be sure that you know everything's right in that sense environmentally and our efficacy is good. So. Quite a bit of things to consider. It's a lot of mass in the air. There's some danger associated with it. So just make sure if you're using this or contracting with somebody uh, that, that you pay attention to that and be careful out there in the field. But as far as um, efficiency and keeping machines out of the field, this is a new interesting tool that we can, mm -hmm. we can put into practice. So, you know, some things we should consider just in, in the actual use of the drone and, and spraying, you know, we're used to, you know, traditionally with field crops and disease control, 20 gallons of water per acre, right, for mm -hmm. carrier. Here, we're at two gallons mm -hmm. per acre. What do you think, you know, in terms of coverage and, and some of these things? This comes up a lot, right? With yeah. white mold, we want that, that fungicide application kind of on the mid stem of the plant. What do we think? You know, we just saw this thing fly. What's your first impression on, you know, coverage and how much is actually getting down? Yeah, it's really impressive. So if you watch, we have a little B-roll video, I think, that's going to go in here. Um, you can actually see the spray coming down and, and it's getting in the prop wash and going through the canopy. So in my impression, it's going to be very different than, than our traditional top-down spray methods. Um, it may, you know, it, it, it be equal to some of the in-canopy spraying mm -hmm. that we're doing now equal to or better, which is... Really yeah. impressive to me. So, Sean, in terms of the economics of something like this, what do you what do you think? You know, for the general farm, soybeans, white mold in today's economy, what do you think the return on investment is with with a unit as it sits here today? Yeah, that's a good question, Damon. I think in Wisconsin we probably have a little bit better of advantage with it, just because we have so many odd shaped fields. Yeah. We have tree lines. <clears throat> obviously we see a lot of electrical lines going around us. I think there's places where we can fit it. And I think obviously, you know, trying to get contractors to come in for our airplanes and helicopters are yeah. not just pricey, but you know, Wisconsin falls at the bottom of the list after all the yeah. I states. So I think there's some definite places. And we actually talked to a, a uh, applicator the other day and he was quoting right around 20 bucks an acre was kind of what his, his thought was in terms of the application. So I definitely think there's some niches and places and another place that we could really look at this is for um, spraying for a fusarium head blight or scab yeah. to really get that into that <clears throat> to that weed head. So I think there's definitely some places that will, this will fit in our Wisconsin cropping system. Yeah, so truly innovative. You know, we've got a lot of technology, an impressive machine here, but also sustainable, not only from an environmental standpoint, maybe you know, making sure we're not getting drift into off areas and that sort of thing, but also sustainable economically. Yeah, I think another place we can really focus in on, and no, Damon, you're aware of this. You know, so you have a soybean field out here, and there's specific hot spots or zones yeah. within the field. So instead of applying the 100 acres, there might be only 35 or 40 acres that we could use this, you know, specifically for uh, white mold to be able to target our sprays, and that could save some farmers a little bit of money. That way, on top of just putting that product in the environmental sustainability side of things in terms of keeping these fungicides along, around longer and longer due to uh, overuse. Yeah, good points. Well, appreciate the time today, guys. Uh, we're going to continue to do some more work with this particular unit and hopefully uh, be able to start to turn some hard numbers in our research and, and put those on the paper.